Today's video is made possible through the support of Jake Smith and dozens of other people on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting what I do, check out the links below in the description and see how you can get involved. Thank you. Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop. Today, it's episode 14 on Project Archie where we get to do the J2 limit switch. So let's dive in. Now, this limit switch is gonna go down here at the base, so you've got we installed this in the last episode, and notice these two little holes down here? That's where your switch is gonna go. It's gonna sit right there, so that when it comes all the way back, it trips the switch over. We've been down this path before. We know it's involved, and the good side is, in this location, because we have, we've got plenty of room here. And because of that, we get to uh, not have to, you know, Fuck up a perfectly good switch by tweaking it all out. It's going to be fine. So you're going to need a couple things. We're going to start by cutting lengths of the uh, 22 gauge wire. You're going to need three pieces of it. I hate this packaging. Look at this. This is how the wire comes packaged. In a bag. That's... Ah! It's terrible. All right, once you've sorted out your rat's nest on the pre-bagged wire, you're gonna need a piece of black, red, and white. This is the 22 gauge. You're gonna need a piece each size at 24 inches long. So measure and cut out 24 inches of 22 gauge black, red, and white wire. I do like doing this in the silicone. So I'm gonna do my black and red first. Okay, and then we can get rid of the spaghetti. Now the white's easy. The white comes on a spool, so that's just, that's lovely to deal with. And we need 24 inches of that. I'm cutting 25, but that's just me compensating. I just like to give it my best. All right, so we're gonna have to put some of the, uh, our little friends on there again, the right angle connectors. And you know how big of a fan I am of those. They're the best. So we're gonna strip off so somebody commented in that I don't use the depth stop here. And if you look close, you can see why. <laughs> it's because the little screw for it just snapped off one day and I've really never messed with it since. I use a backing thumb, like here, I'll show you. So the way I do this is I come in and I have my thumb, the, the distal end of my thumb, and that holds the wire from getting pulled through with the silicone wire that's the thing that helps it just likes it when you do that the best strippers for this are not the ones i'm using these are just the ones i have the strippers that i would rather be using for this are the uh nipex makes a pair i don't know what they're called probably some number but they look kind of like an alligator they bite from the tip and they've got an excellent depth stop especially for short short strips like uh, if you're stripping for Wagos or stuff like that they work great I absolutely love them and they're in my mobile tool bag in the car I really should get a second pair of those for down here because I live in Michigan and it's weeny shrinking cold right now so I'm not really motivated to go out to the car and get my strippers just do a thing it's just this is fine, this will work, it's gonna be okay. But yes, the reason I'm using these strippers really does boil down to I'm a lazy bastard and it's really cold outside, so. Plus, I use them for mobile stuff quite a bit. And if I'm gonna be having my head wedged in the bottom of a boat somewhere 
or fighting a model airplane or something. I just like having really nice strippers because it's one less thing to worry about. So, crimp these on. Oh yeah, these are the ones you gotta mess with. There. I really gotta figure out what kind of crimper you're supposed to use for those. I have not been able to figure that out. If you know, comment because these connectors are really weird in that the metal part only goes, I need a pointy thing. The metal part only goes to here. It doesn't, it doesn't go all the way down. There's like a little ferrule funnel thing. The metal part doesn't go in that. So you only crimp this part. And I have no idea what the hell kind of crimpers are designed to do this like properly. I got a lot of different crimpers. I like, I like using oddball tools, but I don't have anything that really lends itself to this particular application. So I'm just using a, a completely wrong crimper for this, but it works well enough. I mean, to be fair, I haven't had a limit switch on this robot fail yet. There was the one that we destroyed trying to wire it up, but as far as in actual application, no AR3 robot that I have ever built has had a limit switch failure. Never happened. Of course, this is my first AR3 robot. It's the second switch I've ever put on one. But so far I'm batting a thousand. All right, we got our ends. All right, so it's time to put our wires on our switch. The red wire goes to the normally open connection that on this switch is terminal three. So we're gonna put that on there and it's gonna come out forwards coming at you. And these we can slide all the way down. We can do them perfect because this is this is just going to sit right here. It's not going to get all tweaked out and dicked around. It's just going to work. Black goes to the normally closed terminal that's up on top. Now your switch, if you bought like the exact same part number switch, it should match exactly. But check. If you, if you look right here, you'll see you know, the, it'll, it'll, they'll have numbers and it'll say normally closed, normally open, common, stuff like that. Make sure that you're putting this, it's more important to have it on the one that says NO, NC, or common than it is to have it on one, two, or three. That's really fussy to get on there. All the way up. There you go. Oh, man, that looks, that's what they're supposed to look like. Okay? Not all jankified. It just works. I like it. I like it a lot. That, that came out really good. And even though we had oddball crimping, everything's still insulated and good and happy. And we've got plenty of clearance off of stuff. So let's bolt it on. Now for bolts, you're going to need a pair of M3 by 14. Um, the kit comes with pan head screws for this. So pan head screws look like that. That's a pan head screw. And when you measure these, you measure from under the head down so this will be 14 millimeters here and about really almost three millimeters across so three by 14 and we grab a screwdriver and we can just run these right down Now this one fits really well, like way better than the, the first one. We've got a little compression down here at the bottom, but it's not bad. It's, it's perfectly acceptable for this application. So now that it's mounted, here's what it does. We have this big ring here with the lobe on it. And when that lobe comes around, that actuates our limit switch. 
So it's a cam system here. This plate is a retaining plate and it applies tension to preload the J2 bearings, but it also gives us a cam. Cool. So these wires are gonna get pulled into the enclosure in the future. So mark the ends of the wire, put a piece of tape around it. And uh, the easy way is to just wrap a piece of tape around it and then put two stripes on the tape so that you know this is the J2 joint. I'm actually gonna print up a label. I'm printing up a label because I, I have a label maker and why not? You do not have to do it at this level, especially since this label is probably just gonna get torn off later in the future anyway, but I have it, why not? Plus, I just like playing with my label maker. Don't judge me. You get a really good electrical label maker for specifically for doing wire labels and you just, you find uses for that, man. They're really nice. It's one of those tools that I absolutely recommend you get, but don't get it if you don't have a justified need for it. But if you're doing anything where you're building things that have a lot of wires, uh, a label maker is a good one. A good one. Don't get one of the crappy ones. But a good one that uses the, the cloth labels. Just, oh, oh, I love it. All right, so there you have it. We got our switch installed, and it works, and everything's good. And thus endeth episode 14. We're totally set. All right, so I want to thank all you guys for hanging out today in this quick, easy little video. If you need something to do because you're expecting like a 45-minute video, check out the links below. Get in the Discord and come hang out. You could be one of the people harassing me while we shoot these lives. Until then, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time. Project Ar burp, 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 burp. Project Archie episode 14 sync Hi there guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're doing episode 14 on Project Archie where you remember this? You remember this, don't you? We've fuck. I need my crimpers.